Welcome. This video will illustrate a method of removing and replacing electrolytic capacitors on a circuit board. This operation is sometimes informally referred to as recapping. Failing capacitors can cause a computer or electronic device to malfunction. This has become a particular problem with products manufactured from 2000 to around 2010, such as computers, monitors, TVs, DVD players, etc. This was caused by poorly manufactured capacitors from some Asian suppliers that entered the supply chain of major computer makers like HP, Dell, Lenovo, Apple, Sony, and others. This photo shows a pair of good electrolytic capacitors. Ignore the score lines across the top. That's a normal part of the manufacturing process, and it typically takes the form of a single line, a pair of cross lines as shown here, or three radial lines in a Y-shaped pattern, sort of like a Mercedes-Benz logo. These capacitors are good, and their tops are perfectly flat. This is a failing capacitor. The electrolyte inside is deteriorating and causing the capacitor to bloat. The top bulges upward into a convex shape. In this photo, the black cap in the background is good, with a flat top but the brown cap is bulging, and a bit of gold-colored electrolytic fluid is beginning to leak from the top. These capacitors are on a computer motherboard, and although the computer wasn't yet malfunctioning, it would be in a matter of time, so they may as well be replaced before they cause trouble. This photo shows three brown capacitors, with bulging tops and brownish electrolytic fluid leaking and encrusting their tops. These are the capacitors I'll be replacing today. They are on this circuit board, a power supply board from a computer monitor. This particular circuit board is well marked. You can see the markings printed on the circuit board identifying the capacitors as C111, C112, and the leftmost one is C110. Flipping the board over shows they are also marked on the bottom side, C110, C111, and C112. Note there are small plus signs next to the left one of each pair of solder pads. These electrolytic capacitors are polarized. They have a positive lead and a negative lead. When inserting the new capacitors, it's crucial to make sure they are oriented correctly. Not all boards are as well marked as this one, so make sure you notice how the old caps are oriented before you remove them. Electrolytics typically have a broad white stripe down one side to designate the negative lead, as seen in these two photos. This is one of the old capacitors, after it has been removed from the circuit board. This is the new capacitor that will replace it. I ordered these from DigiKey. I've been buying electronic components from them since I was building and repairing audio equipment back in the 1970s. They're a long-standing company with a solid reputation, and they should have exactly what you need. Notice the broad white stripes under my thumb, identifying the negative leads. The specs you want to match are the capacitance value and the working voltage. If you can't find an exact match, you can go up a step for either value, but don't go lower. You'll also want to match the lead spacing, the distance between the two leads. Try to match this as closely as possible so the new caps slide right into the holes the old caps came out of. You can determine the spacing by flipping the board over and measuring between the solder joints, or if the old caps have already been removed, you can measure the distance between the holes on the front side of the board. First and foremost, you should have experience soldering on circuit boards. Experience helps you sense how much heat you're applying so you don't overheat or damage the components you're soldering. You'll need a good soldering iron. I'm using a Weller 60 watt iron with a chisel tip with a small sponge in the base of the stand that can be kept moistened for wiping and cleaning the tip periodically. I'll be using this beveled chisel tip, but depending on the job I may sometimes need to use a smaller tip like this needle tip. On this computer motherboard I recapped a while back, I needed the needle tip. A larger tip would have risked smearing solder across circuit board traces and shorting something out. If I were working in this densely packed row of solder pads, I'd use the needle tip. But the area I'll be working on today is here, C112, C111, and C110. I've got more room around these pads, so I'll use a chisel tip to get more heat onto the solder pads more quickly. You really need three hands for this kind of soldering work, so I make use of this handy desk vise. It's adjustable and has a rubber base that easily slides around my workbench. I clamp a flat area of the board into the vise, and it holds the circuit board so I can work on both sides of the board at the same time. These are the three capacitors I'll be removing. The idea will be to apply moderate finger pressure sideways on the capacitor, while heating the solder joint on the other side until the capacitor's leg lifts out of the hole. Clean the tip of the soldering iron on the sponge, tin the tip, apply sideways pressure to the cap, and melt the solder joint. The leg will lift out of the hole. 
Now apply pressure in the reverse direction while heating the other solder joint. Go back and forth a few times until you can pull the old cap out of the board. Repeat for the next capacitor. Clean and retin the tip, apply finger pressure, and heat the solder joint. Alternate back and forth until you can pull out the second capacitor. Repeat once more for the third capacitor. Clean the tip, retin, apply pressure, and heat the joint. The leg will lift out from the board. Back and forth until the cap is free. And there's the third capacitor. Trim the leads of the new capacitor to about 0.15 inch. That should be long enough to extend through the board. Clean and tin the soldering iron tip and lightly tin the leads of the capacitor. This helps avoid cold solder joints when the capacitor is installed. To install the new capacitor, pay attention to the polarity and insert the leads into the holes in the circuit board. Apply finger pressure to the top of the cap while the solder pads are heated until the legs sink in. Clean the tip, retin, hold the cap in place, and heat the solder joint until one leg sinks into the melted solder. Heat the other solder pad until the other leg sinks in. Alternate back and forth until the cap is fully seated in place. Repeat for the second cap. Trim the leads and tin them. Hold the cap in place, observing proper polarity. Heat one solder pad until one leg sinks in, then the other solder pad to seat the second leg. Alternate until the cap is fully seated. And once more for the third capacitor. Trim and tin the leads, hold in place, and heat alternating solder pads until the capacitor is fully seated. Check your soldering to make sure you haven't created any shorts and don't have any cold solder joints. Here are the new capacitors in place. Reassemble everything. In this case, it's a computer monitor, which I'm reassembling in the reverse order of disassembly. During disassembly, you should have marked anything that could be ambiguous during reassembly such as these two pairs of connectors on the left side of the back plate. You want to make sure you're able to put everything back together the way it was. The bad capacitors had caused this monitor to alternately flash on and off as the power supply struggled to stabilize itself. The new capacitors should allow the power supply to work properly. And here's the repaired monitor in perfect flicker-free working order.